What is going on guys and welcome back to another Touchdowns to Home Runs. I'm so glad that you're here for this video. Football is starting to come back. A couple weekends ago, we had the FCS kickoff. We had Central Arkansas versus Austin P. I was able to watch a bit of that game. Then this weekend, we had some more college football. I watched two games. I watched the Marshall Eastern Kentucky game, which was a blowout for Marshall. And then the Texas State SMU game, which was actually a close game. I wanted Texas State to come out and pull out with that, but SMU barely squeaked by for that win. And then just last night, I was able to watch the Army, I'm not Army, Navy and BYU game which was a blowout as well for BYU. But football is coming back, and I cannot get enough of watching football. And we have NFL coming back this Thursday. So for this video, I want to give you guys my week one predictions. So starting off the first game of the season, unlike last year, as you can tell, I am a huge Bears fan. Uh, last season, because it was the 100th season, instead of having the defending Super Bowl champions, which was the New England Patriots, play the Thursday night opener that we had the Packers and Bears play for the 100th season uh, but we're going back to the defending Super Bowl champions always playing the first game and that will be against the um, team that they played in the Super Bowl if they have them in their schedule in this case the Chiefs do not play the 49ers at all this season so we have the Chiefs and Texans Thursday night first game of the season you got Deshaun Watson versus Patrick Mahomes great matchup there the Texans traded DeAndre, they got David Johnson, they got Brandon Cooks. I'm pretty sure J.J. Watt's coming back from injury, but this Chiefs team is just way, way, way too good for this Texans team to lose this first game, especially if it's at Arrowhead. And I'm pretty sure that the Chiefs are one of the teams that is actually having fans at their games. There's like six teams or something like that who are having fans. You got Mahomes, you got Hill, you got Watkins, you got Hardman, you got Kelsey, and now you have who what I think is the best pick in the whole draft this year, Clyde edwards Elair. I'm a huge fan of him, and that was just unfair that the Chiefs are able to grab him because he is going to help that offense so much. If you watched him at LSU like I did last season, he is a real game changer, and just adding him to a team full of already full of weapons and everything is just going to be unbeatable. So first game, I am taking the Chiefs. Now we go on to Sunday. We got the 1 o'clock games. First game, Eagles at the football team, the Washington football team. They're, they're a struggling team. Uh, do, I don't even know if we know who their quarterback is going to be right now. It could be Haskins. It could be Allen. I haven't heard officially who they're going to start. They got Terry McLaurin, who's obviously probably the best um, player on that offense because they just let go of Adrian Peterson and Geis is gone because uh, he got arrested or something like that. And then you're adding Chase Young to this defense, so that should be fun to watch him in his first game. But the Eagles, I feel like, are just way too good for this football team. They're going to be tanking this year. They're going to be get a high draft pick this year, so I don't think that the football team have a good shot in this game. But who knows? Week one, we don't really know what these teams are like, especially that there's been no preseason. So all of these games could be shockers. Anyone can win, but I am going to the Eagles in this game. Next game, you got the Dolphins and Patriots. I am going with the Patriots, hands down in this one. Cam Newton, I can't wait to see what Cam Newton and Belichick and McDaniels have been cooking up uh, during the offseason, how their whole offensive scheme is going to look and everything, and I think that it's going to go really well. So I'm taking the Patriots, hands down in this game, and they still got one of the better defenses in the league. The Dolphins are a good team now. They added a lot of pieces to this team to make them better, but I still feel like the Patriots are the better team here and they're going to take that next game up we got packers and vikings packers and vikings that's a tough game because the vikings these are two very good teams obviously probably the two front runners in the nfc north this year both of them made the playoffs last year the packers made the nfc championship game last year packers have a very good defense and offense they're all around a very well-rounded team but same are the vikings the vikings did take a bit of a step back this season with trading Stephon Diggs now they were able to grab um Justin Jefferson in the draft and they still got Thielen and they still got Cook who's one of the better running backs in the league first game of the season it's going to be indoor because it's in Minnesota I am going to go with the Packers I just feel like the Packers are the more well-rounded team here uh, and I just feel like the Vikings still got a bit more to work out on their defensive side of the ball I just feel like the Packers are an all-around more well-rounded team than the Vikings this season Next up, you got the Colts and the Jaguars. Phillip Rivers and the Colts versus Gardner Minshew and the Jaguars. We know that the Jaguars are tanking. They've cut everyone on their team. 
they're missing a lot of key pieces on defense and everything like that. They've traded their whole defense. They got rid of Leonard Fournette. So I'm taking the Colts in this game unless Minshew Mania comes up big and then somehow pulls around and wins that division or something crazy like that. I am taking the Colts this game because I just don't see the Jaguars being a good team this year. Next up, we got the Bears and Lions. You know who, obviously, I'm going to take in this game. But uh, word is that Mr. Trubisky is starting for the Bears week one, which I am not happy about. I want to see Nick Foles. What was the point of trading for Nick Foles if we're not even going to play them? And I am, frankly, sick of Mr. Trubisky playing. Who knows? He could come shock us and he could make me eat my words and everything. But I want to see Nick Foles play. Allen Robinson, he's one of the best players wide receivers in the nfl hands down in my opinion he's my favorite player on the bears just because he's such a good player but just the weapons around him on that offense are good we lost david montgomery to injury so cohen's our only running back and i don't he's a good guy to have as a tandem but i don't think cohen is going to be enough to carry a whole run game for the bears and that's something that we've really struggled with so the passing game is going to be very reliant in this game but our defense is still our defense. We're still one of the best defenses in the league. And the Lions, yes, their offense is good and everything. Stafford's a good quarterback. They got Kenny Galladay. They got DeAndre Swift now. And they just signed Adrian Peterson, I'm pretty sure. But I still feel like overall the Bears have had the Lions number over the years. So I am going the Bears in this game. Next up, we have my second favorite team playing. We got the Raiders versus the Panthers. I'm also a big Panthers fan. Let's see how Teddy B does in this first game. Obviously, you got the best running back in the league, Christian McCaffrey on the Panthers still. DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel. So that offense is not the problem. It's the Panthers defense, which is really the struggle. We lost a lot of guys this year, and our draft, we only drafted defensive players. Two of the main guys being Utah Gross Matos, and then we got Derek Brown on that defense. So it's really how this defense pairs up against the Raiders offense, who is actually pretty good. Josh Jacobs, obviously, who should have won Offensive Rookie of the Year last year. Great rookie right, uh, going into a sophomore year for a running back. Derek Carr is a decent quarterback, and then you just pick up Henry Ruggs and my... A uh, guy from South Carolina who I feel like is going to be a real breakout player this season. And apparently the Raiders have been loving him in camp so far. Brian Edwards, uh, he's just a guy who will go up and catch every ball. Does remind me of Allen Robinson in some sense because Edwards isn't going to beat you anything special with his feet. Like his footwork and everything is still good, but he just catches every single ball. So that's a good pairing when you have him and Ruggs because Ruggs is a guy who will beat you with his feet and everything. He's super fast, but then you got Edwards who's going to be your third down go-to guy. So in this game, I want to take the Panthers because I'm a Panthers fan and I believe in them and everything. But if I had to put my fandom aside, I would go the Raiders in this game. Next up, Jets at Bills. Still at a 1 o'clock game. I am going with the Bills in this one. I just don't see the Jets as being a good threat team at all. And I feel like the Bills are a very strong team this year. I feel like Josh Allen can have a huge breakout year this season. The Bills have a very good defense led by Trey White, one of the best cornerbacks in the league. Love watching Trey White play. And then they just get Stephon Diggs on an offense, Bills offense, and they still got at running back. They got... Devin Singletary and then who they just pick up I think they drafted Zach Moss in the draft this year so that Bills offense is looking pretty good their defense is looking pretty good and I just don't see enough weapons on the Jets to be able to compete with the Bills this season so I'm taking the Bills next up we got a very good game Browns at Ravens obviously the Ravens are looking like Super Bowl contenders as they were last year. They just fell short to the Titans in that one divisional game. You got the defending MVP Lamar Jackson on this offense. You got Willie Sneed still. You got Hollywood Brown who apparently has put on a lot of muscle mass and weight this season. So he's going to be bigger this season which is huge for them. You add J.K. Dobbins to a running uh, backfield with Mark Ringham already. So that's going to be a very good tandem that I'm excited to watch play. And you got some of the best tight end. Uh, tandem in the league you got Nick Boyle and Mark Andrews so that offense is very well rounded defensive they're still very good they lose they cut Earl Thomas off the team but you still got Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters in the secondary they add Calais Campbell from the Jaguars they draft Patrick Queen and then you still got guys who else do they have on that team 
no one off the top of my head right now. I know I'm definitely missing someone, but Ravens defense is, isn't a problem at all. So they're going to be a very good team this season. And the Browns, the Browns offense, it all depends on Baker Mayfield this season. I want to see Baker Mayfield do really well. I want to see the Browns do really well because I feel like they're just a team that everyone's rooting for just because they've been bad for so long and they have the weapons and skill to be a good team. So I feel like a lot of people are rooting for the Browns. But in this game, I am taking the Ravens. There's just too many question marks on that Browns team to compete with the Ravens right now until the Browns prove to me that they have improved and they are an elite team in the NFL. I am taking the Ravens hands down. Next up, we got the Seahawks and Falcons. Seahawks are looking like one of the better teams in the league. They play in a really tough division with the 49ers, Rams, and Cardinals. But Russell Wilson is still back. You got DK, you got Tyler Lockett, you got uh, Chris Carson on that offense, and then you just add Greg Olson at a tight end position. Defensive-wise, they're still looking really good. They add Jamal Adams this season. And this Falcons team, they have a very good offense. If Matt Ryan can step up and play really well, you got Julio, who in my opinion is the best wide receiver in the league. You got Todd Gurley now. You got Calvin Ridley. You got Hayden Hurst. So that is a very good offense. Defensively, on that side of the ball, I don't think that they're as strong as they could be. So I am taking the Seahawks in this game because they're just a way more well-rounded team. Although, don't be shocked if the Falcons do go up and put up a lot of points this game. I just feel like the... Seahawks defense will get a stop when they need to in this game I do predict that it's going to be a very close game But in the end I feel like the Seahawks are just going to make a stop when they need to when the Falcons aren't going to be able to stop the Seahawks offense when they need to and pull out by seven points or something like that or three points So I'm taking the Seahawks in this game 405 game we got the Chargers at the Bengals first game for one of my favorite players Joe Burrow uh, in Cincinnati, they're playing a Chargers team with a whole new uniform set and everything. They got Justin Herbert and Tyrod Taylor at the quarterback position. Chargers are a very good team. They got Eckler at running back. They signed him back. They let go of Melvin Gordon. Um, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams at wide receiver. Um, Hunter Henry at tight end. And then still on that defensive side of the ball, you got Derwin James, who's a guy I really love to watch play. He's a great player. The Bengals are just, we don't know what to expect with the Bengals right now with Joe Burrow. I want him to do well so bad. That offense isn't actually that bad. If you look at it, you got Burrow, you got Mixon, you got AJ Green, you got Tyler Boyd, you got um, John Ross. So they're not actually that bad. The offensive line is pretty bad. So um, with Joey Boza on that other side of the ball... That's going to be tough for uh, Joe Burrow in this game just because of how weak the Bengals offensive line is. And the Bengals defense isn't anything to write home about. And I just feel like the Chargers, again, are a more well-rounded team. But I do want to see the Bengals do well and win this game. But I am going to take the Chargers in this one. Sticking with the 425 game, or the last game was 405. This one's 425, 20 minutes later. You got the Cardinals at the 49ers defending NFC champions versus a Cardinals team who looks to be on the rise. You got Kyler Murray, Offensive Rookie of the Year. And then you add DeAndre Hopkins to this offense with already Christian Kirk and Larry Fitzgerald at the wide receiver position. And then you also got Kenyon Drake in the backfield. And then his defense is also very good. With Chandler Jones, you got Buda Baker, and you're just adding Isaiah Simmons to this linebacker slot a position for the Cardinals. So these are going to be two very good teams going into this game. The 49ers obviously made the Super Bowl last year. Nick Boza, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, who else do you got? They add Javon Kinlaw on that defense. He still got Richard Sherman. I can't wait to see Javon Kinlaw because he went to South Carolina. There's a bunch of 49ers who went to South Carolina on that team. Another guy being Debo Samuel on that offensive side of the ball. He is hurt, but he will come back and be a huge impact for the 49ers. You got Jimmy G still. You got Mostert. You got, uh, who's the other guy? Tevin Coleman. You got George Kittle, who in many opinion is the best tight end in the NFL. And then you got Brandon Ayuk, uh, new wide receiver that they just drafted this season. The 49ers are definitely one of the top three teams in the NFL. They're just so elite on both sides of the ball, and I feel like that's just going to overpower the Cardinals, especially the Cardinals still have a lot to work out. They still got a lot of young talent. 
So I'm not saying that the Cardinals will never be able to compete with the 49ers just right now. First game of this season, I feel like the Cardinals still have a lot to learn about who they are to be able to compete at a really good level with the 49ers. So I am taking the 49ers in this game. Next up, we got one of the better games uh, in the week one slate. You got the Buccaneers at the Saints. This Buccaneers offense, Tom Brady, Leonard Fournette, Rob Gronkowski, Chris Godwin, and uh, Mike Evans. Elite offense, one of the best offenses in the NFL versus the Saints team who has been a very solid team over the years, but they do look to be on a bit of a decline right now from what they were coming from last season. I want to take the Buccaneers in this game, and that's what I'm going to do just because there's so much hype around them and everything. I know that a lot of people think they do, they won't live up to that hype. A lot of people don't think Tom Brady is that good, but guys, he's still the same Tom Brady. He's won six Super Bowls. You can never doubt this guy. I'm not a Tom Brady fan at all, but it's so hard to bet against him, especially now that he has this many offensive weapons around him. I am taking the Buccaneers in this game against the Saints. Then we got the Sunday night game, Cowboys at Rams. It will be the Rams' first time playing at SoFi Stadium. First game at SoFi Stadium, they gave it to the Rams over the Chargers. Cowboys and Rams, two, these are two very good teams. I don't want to say these, these aren't elite teams, but these are decent enough teams that it will be a good game. The Cowboys tip, pick up CeeDee Lamb on uh, offense this season in the draft, which will really help them. I love that pick because they weren't going. They didn't need a wide receiver, but they knew the talent. They didn't want to pass up on CeeDee Lamb. So that was a great pick for the Cowboys, and I feel like he'll be a huge weapon for the Cowboys this season. The Rams offense isn't that strong. I'm not a big fan of Jared Goff. They get rid of Gurley. They replace him with Cam Akers. They draft Cam Akers in the draft. They lose Braden Cooks, but they got... Woods and um, Cup still. I just feel like the Cowboys are the better team in this situation. Even though the Rams are going to be excited that they got new uniforms. They're playing in a new stadium and everything. And I feel like a lot of people will be rooting for the Rams. I'm not a Cowboys fan at all. But I am going to be taking the Cowboys in this game. Next up, Monday night games. We got the 7-10 game. We got the Steelers versus the Giants in New York. This is an easy pick for me. I've taken the Steelers. The Steelers have one of the best defenses in the league. And Big Ben's coming back for that offense. And the Giants just have a lot of question marks everywhere on the field this season. So I am taking the Steelers in this game. Leading up to our last game, we got the Titans at the Broncos. 10-20, so a very late game on ESPN. I'm taking the Titans in this one. A lot of people are very high on the Broncos this season. I am not. I am not. Someone who's high on the Broncos this season. I don't feel like Drew Locke will be able to lead the Broncos against this AFC West division who's very good. They got offensive weapons around them. Cortland Sutton, they got Jerry Judy, they got KJ Hamler now. And then they got a good tandem in the backfield with Melvin Ingram and Phillip Lindsay. But I just don't see... And they got a good defense too. I just don't see the Broncos competing with that AFC West. They are a very good division. And I just feel like... The Broncos, I could eat my words and everything. The Broncos could go out and easily make the playoffs this year. I just don't feel like Drew Locke is the guy this year to lead the Broncos to a playoff spot. So I am taking the Titans. The Titans were a very good team last year, made the AFC Championship. And I am taking the Titans, Derrick Henry, A.J. Brown, Ryan Tannehill. Lots of good players on that team. And they just signed my favorite player, Jadeveon Clowney. I completely forgot about that. So that's just another reason for me to pick the Titans. I am going in the Titans with it in this game. And that is all 16 games. That was a lot of talking for me, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below your opinions on who you think is going to win some good games this season uh, in this week and everything. Let me know anything about week one. I love hearing from you guys. Definitely like the video. Definitely subscribe if you love football because I love football and we love football on this channel and we're going to be talking lots more football. So definitely hit that sub button and thanks for watching and definitely come back next time.